Well, it's all back together with the new engine. Everything went together really smooth. Ended up with a, a spare air pump, a spare clutch fan blade, and a damaged radiator, but everything else as it should be. So I'm gonna drop it down and we'll do a first start. Because why not? See if something went horribly wrong. I did put oil in it, but there's no coolant in it yet. So I definitely can't leave it running. Still curious nonetheless to see if everything went smoothly because it has been, I think the car has been apart for about a month. Clutch pedal works, that's a good sign. I put a new fuel filter in it, so this is to be expected. Filter housing was dry. Pulled the fuel pump relay. So I've got the battery charger on 40 amps, hooked straight up to this thing. I'm gonna prime it again, put the cover on, crank it again, the EKP's out, so no fuel's coming in. See if I can get oil pressure. This seems to be the thing that I've found that some people have had good luck with. So I've already got at least seven quarts in there, sorry, at least eight quarts in this thing. Maybe even a little bit more, but yikes. And I can't remember if I mentioned it, but I did pull the plugs. I'm gonna have to pull the pan and check the pump. There's nothing for it. Um, oh, sorry. Watching the live stream to Classic Daily, part three on the K-Swap stuff. I also do have a uh, fuel leak. So once I pull off the bottom panels, I'll see where that's coming from. But uh, I gotta pull the under trays back off and I'm gonna be pulling the oil pan. All right, so subframe is down. Um, I'm gonna pull the pan. I do still have to uh, loosen the dipstick tube thingy up there. Uh, there is an oil drain tube to the airbox, which I'll probably pull out of the airbox. And then the valve cover oil drain as well. I pulled like 12 quarts of oil out of the pan because obviously I was filling the bejesus out of it. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to pull the power steering pump just yet. It looks like it might clear without it. Ah. Uh, Probably pull the back bracket though, just to give myself as much room as possible. Then pull the pan, see what we got. Worst case, I'll rip the pump off of the good S54 and throw it in here. I just want this car off the lift. I will say, it only took like 15 minutes to get this far. So uh, E46 has the best design steering coupler of any vehicle I've ever worked on by a not insignificant margin. So, not safety wired, but definitely in place. I do see some schmoo on the uh, oil pickup. Everything looks really good though. I'm tempted to swap the entire pump assembly from my other S54, because I know it's good. I think I'm gonna ask around and uh, figure out some questions. Everything looks pretty good. I mean, it, it was slinging in oil, so I'm not worried about having cranked it now. Uh, it was definitely filled all the way up to the mains. <sighs> hmm. Still, I don't see anything really obvious in here. So, just got done with the O'Reilly's, picked up an entire enormous 
tube of this lube. I am uh, hoping that packing the oil pump with that will solve my problem. That's the only thing I got from a couple of my uh, shop foreman buddies that run both of the service departments at the local BMW dealerships. So I'm going to try that. Um, I should be able to put uh, put that lube in the pump, put it back together, fill the pan at least enough to get oil pump prime and crank it before even putting the subframe back in. So if I have to pull it again, I should still have flexibility to do that. Uh, I reached out to a friend locally that I sold an S54 pan and pump set to about four years ago uh, for an E36 track car, but he ended up selling the car before they uh, did the pan conversion. So he's only five miles from my shop and he still has it. Uh, that would potentially save me from having to pull the known good pump assembly off my old S54. But the pump on the new one's only got 38k on it, I think, so... I think I'm just gonna pack it and cross my fingers, so wish me luck. So the S54 uses a tensioner on the oil pump chain and it's reverse thread, so... Uh, lefty, tighty, righty, loosey. I am going to get a small flat blade in the middle there and a wrench, and I'm going to very carefully loosen it up by tightening it, sort of. <laughs> All right, so time to whip the 10 mils off, and I've been told that there's nothing special about the inside of this, so we'll see. I, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Oh no, there's no light, hold on. So I gotta finish packing this crap in, but the uh, plan is to pack that in and the entire front housing and then put it back together. All right, well getting it back in is much easier because you're not fighting against a uh, tensioner, but I did get it all back together. I'm just waiting for my roommate now to uh, arrive with pan gaskets. This one looks like it had the original on it and probably had been even reused. Um, but I have a bunch of those in stock at home. So like I said, just waiting for that to show up. <clears throat> I'll stab that on here. And once that's in place, I am planning to throw the pan on it. Uh, put... I'll say probably full seven quarts of oil in it. Um, and then crank it over with the subframe still down, just in case I have to pull it again. And we'll see. I will remain hopeful that uh, it will get prime immediately. And then this will be the only time I'll ever have to think about this. But uh, in the case it doesn't, I'll have to pull this back off and replace the entire oil pump assembly and try again. No doubt. So, pump is fucked. So, if we see oil coming up through there, it's a good sign. Yup. There's a big mess. It worked.
so I just got a button back up. Put some coolant in it. It has started once, but... The check engine light's on because the secondary air pump uh, is not hooked up anymore. I'm getting a pretty cool buzz from my fuel pump. Oh, I just remembered I changed the clutch in this car. I haven't driven it with that yet either. Take it just on a really quick Weird. Oh, the buzz is coming from the taillights. It's nice having oil pressure. So I'll turn up the uh, temperature, put these on, see if I do end up getting heat. Probably won't be that quick, obviously. I'm sure we still have some air pockets in the cooling system anyway. <clears throat> Stability control giving me some some trouble here. Have to pull the codes for that. This thing's always had working stability control. Runs nice. Now the fellow that I bought this car from. Ah, steering lock. Said that the clutch is. Oh, he's not kidding. There's absolutely nothing left of that. I'm gonna need help to get this over to the lift. Shoot. So I forgot I had my old winch down here. I haven't used it in forever, but let's give it a go. No, oh, that was amazingly successful. I'll take it. Get this thing up in the air. Maybe clean off the floor a hair. And then get the LSB in here until I can get it out to the other garage. Well, I mean, it's a little bit leaky, not terrible. It has a pretty bad exhaust leak, and I can tell why. It was definitely let go, so it's gonna need a lot of exhaust help. I think he said the passenger side control arm is bad. He also said the axles were bad. This one's fine. Oh, yeah, left side one's bad. Um, front, front left tire, yeah, both front tires are pretty dry rotted. Rears are worn out, but okay. Rear diff, pretty dry. Definitely a Minnesota car, plenty rusty. But nothing looks too terrible. And I'll take his word for it, uh, but it didn't shake too bad while it was driving. Usually the rear drive shafts or the front drive shaft, so the things to go. Uh, can't even tell. Looks like it has a Luke LF30 pump, that's nice. 
And, oh, I'll have to zip tie stitch this back together. Can't have that on our faux M-Tech bumper. And I will take my scene points to go. Fixed right up. It's a fake M-Tech bumper anyway. Crap quality. So, uh, ended up changing out the oil pump on the Laguna Seca blue car. Um, it did end up priming immediately after that, but nothing I could do would make the old pump prime. I do still have to pull it apart and autopsy it because I'm curious, but... There you go.